Okay, let's talk about lighting basics. The reason we're going to talk a lot about lighting is because every building has lights, and most people can tell if you screw up the lighting if you do an energy efficiency retrofit. So we don't want to do that. So the three topics we're going to talk about are quantity, the quality, and the goals and basic terminology. Regarding lighting quantity, first the light emanates from some device, some type of technology. And this can be LED, it can be fluorescent, it can be incandescent. What we're interested in there is the efficacy, which is the lumens per watt. Lumens are what is coming out of the bulb, okay, and the watt is the energy going into the bulb. So we want to get a high efficacy. It's a lot like efficiency, but it's not unitless. It's lumens per watt. We want to maximize that if that's possible. Then the light has to escape the fixture, which is where we're going to talk about design. The light has to get through all these baffles and get to the target. And there's a term there called coefficient of utilization, which is somewhat like the delivery efficiency. And this relates to the fixture. Finally, third thing is the maintenance. If we clean the fixture more often, we get more light out of it. Okay, let's talk about lighting quality now. So lighting quality is composed of three primary areas, the light source color, the color rendering index, and the function between glare and design. I can see I've got to write a three there. So let's talk about light source color. The color of the light source is the color you see when you look at the light bulb. And you can see on the right hand side here different types of lamps that you may be familiar with. Let's start off with standard incandescent would have a color temperature of around 2700 Kelvin. And what that's saying is if this were a sun or a star or some hot object, it would be emanating wavelengths of light that are representative of 2700 Kelvin temperature on the surface. What's counterintuitive about this is the higher you go in temperature, the more blue the light appears. And we often call that cool white or whatever, you know, cool white would be about 4100 Kelvin, somewhere in here. And we call that cool white, although technically it's actually a warmer temperature than standard incandescent lamp color. So this is important because it establishes the ambiance of an environment. I'll give you an example in a few minutes. Now we're going to talk about color rendering index, your ability to distinguish colors. Now on the bottom you see three pictures of maybe someone you recognize and it's probably not me, uh, but, uh, and you can see he's fascinated with what I'm saying, but you can see here a color rendering index that goes from a scale of 0 to 100. It was established based on the incandescent lamp for interior lighting, so 100 is not the best. Even outside lighting would be better than that under bright sun conditions, but let's just take a look at a color rendering index of 55 on a scale of 1 to 100, and you can see that the picture is just kind of gray, whereas you see a color rendering index closer to 100, you're getting more reds, and really close to you really can see the reds in the hues, etc., in the face tone. So this is very subtle, but you can see that it does impact the color and the ability and actually how people feel when they can see more vivid colors, they feel better. So again, that's color rendering index. Now a good way to show how color rendering index and correlated color temperature go together as far as color temperature goes, the left one is more yellow and the right picture is more white. That tells you the difference between the color temperature. But you can see more when you take a look at the ability to distinguish colors. And so if you look down here under these same pictures, you can see that it's very hard to tell yellows and blues and reds, where in the right side picture, you can see better color rendition you can notice these other colors and, and distinguish them better. And most people are more comfortable with that white light and high color rendering index light. Now the last area we want to talk about with respect to lighting quality is the impact of glare and design. This is a big issue with LED lights because they give off so much more light. They're so much brighter and they're much better at targeting than our traditional sources. This is an aerial photo of a parking lot and you can see the distribution looks great. You can see all this light you know, looks wonderful. All the colors look great. However, if you were to experience that parking lot as a, as a user, you would notice this glare could be somewhat of a problem. So you have to balance this glare and design. This definitely impacts people and productivity. You don't want to mess up the productivity because that's worth 100 to 1,000 times the value of the energy savings when you're talking about productivity of people. So let's try to pull all this information together and establish some basic lighting goals. One of the things you want to do in any lighting retrofit is to understand the target light levels. And these come from an organization called the Illuminating Engineering Society, IES. They publish what's required in different environments. For example, in a parking lot, you're only required to have one to three foot candles, just say two. And these are just rough numbers. 
um, on a factory floor or aisle weigh 30 foot candles and this is a measurement uh, in the United States overseas this would be in lux and 30 foot candles just so you know equals about 300 lux it's just the difference between feet squared and metered squared anyway offices or, or a, a writing environment uh, table desktop around 50 foot candles somewhere in there really what's important is the contrast if you're reading with light behind you it's a lot easier because you don't have the glare factor Headlights on cars are the same brightness, whether it's day or night, but the contrast is better at night. And so the contrast is really, really important here. But you have to meet these required light levels. And so that's what we're talking about when we're saying achieve the target light levels. The next principle is to turn the lights off when the building is unoccupied or the space is unoccupied. This is obvious because you save 100% of the energy when you turn things off. Then the next step is to upgrade the lighting and again you can get these you know pretty attractive returns the goal there and there's a lot of different ways to go as far as upgrades and this is a basic webinar we might do an advanced one that would go in more detail but basically what you're trying to do is get the best efficiency or efficacy and glare combination there and let me go through some abbreviated terms which are common in the lighting industry. For example, here is something you might see on the side of a lamp. So the F means fluorescent, the 32 is the watts, T means tube, 8 means eighths of an inch. So this would be 8 eighths of an inch or 1 inch. These last three are actually two different things. The 8 refers to the CRI, the color rendering index, and the 41 is indicating that the color temperature is 4100 Kelvin. If you see that on a lamp in the ceiling, you'll know what that is and how to do the retrofit such that you accomplish what you're trying to achieve in the space. Now, here's an example of a retrofit where the existing fixture was uh, a, a T12, and that's really old, but it could have been a T8, and it was upgraded to a T5 fixture. Today, it could be done to an LED that's shielded, but you can see the difference here, 98 watts to 32 watts. Pretty substantial. Lighting is changing all the time. I've uh, written several articles in Buildings Magazine about different types of easy upgrades. And just to give you a quick example, you know, 40 years ago we had lighting that could would take 144 watts to accomplish something, and you can see the progression of newer lighting technologies, uh, getting more light, cleaner light, brighter light, white light, better CRI light, etc., uh, with less watts. So that's a quick review of lighting basics. I think we've covered a little bit about quantity, we've talked about quality, and some basic goals and terminology. Catch in the next section.